Oh yeah, it's the Paul Gilson YouTube channel, and it is now time for our Saturday Night Smoke Together. Yeah, so grab your favorite pipe, grab your favorite blend, and grab your favorite beverage, and let's smoke something together. Yeah, today is the last day of November. It is November 30th. Tomorrow is December 1st, and December 7th which is next Saturday, I will turn 60 years old. A little bit of a milestone. So yeah, so we have my first Gilson pipe I ever made. Yeah, and it is filled with, from Abbey Pipe Club, this 1983 blend called Jacob's Ladder. A Latakia rich, unbelievable blend. I was going to smoke this Edwards uh, Woolly Mammoth that um, my good friend, uh, my good friends, uh, Garrett and uh, Katie Crozier sent me, but that stuff kicks my ass. I can't smoke a whole Gilson bowl full of that. It's just going to kick my ass, so... All right, so let's start some on fire. Yeah, and we'll figure out what we're going to talk about. Got a couple things. This is going to be a really, really good show. This is going to, I think, shed some light on some subjects that maybe somebody needs to hear. Here we go. Mm. Oh, man. Oh, that's a great blend. That just tastes so good. I got 12 more jars that I ordered two weeks ago, and I called these guys up. They're down south, so, you know, they kind of take things easy a little bit, and uh, well, uh, I called them up like three days ago. I think that order went out like last Wednesday. I said last Wednesday or the Wednesday before because I ordered it like a week and a half ago. No, I think it went out, yeah, when you said it did. Okay. I spent $350. I didn't tell them that. I just said, look, I, yeah, I did, I think. I don't know, it doesn't matter. If it doesn't show up here the next week, I'm going to say I want my order or my money back. Mm. You got to be careful too, otherwise this blend will bite you in the ass. What are we going to talk about? As my friend the Tunnel Take would say, what are we going to talk about? Mm. Wow. Let's talk about your daughters. How many of you have daughters? I have four. They range from 21, almost 22, to 33 years old. Mm -hmm. What do you think your responsibility as a father is? Let me just share. All right, think about that for a second. What do you think your responsibility to that young lady is as her father? I'll wait. Well, 
I took it upon my responsibility and I haven't always been the perfect father, the perfect dad, you know, or the perfect person in my life, but I raised my daughters to be princesses. The way you live your life and the way that you treat your daughter or daughters, that's the kind of man they're going to pick out. Okay? So I figured out a long time ago that I had to set the bar real high, all right? Because I wanted all my daughters to have good guys. I didn't want to have to go out shooting freaking boyfriends and that and throwing guys off the porch. So by right, you know, I'd spend time with them and we'd go on daddy daughter dates. I dated my daughters, okay? Not in a weird way, but I dated my daughters one at a time. And how I did that is, um, right, you know, right about the time when they started getting interested in makeup and stuff and boys, and <clears throat> I'd say, honey, uh, come on, let's, let's go to the store, let's go shopping, let's go get some lunch or something together. And so we'd go shopping and they'd be like, let's go, I'd, I'd be like, let's go down the makeup aisle. What kind of makeup do you like, you know? And, you know, this is already after they started to use makeup. So I wasn't getting them into makeup prematurely or any of that stuff. And so we would look at the different colors. We'd spend sometimes an hour in the store, you know, and I'd be interested in it, you know. Well, why do you like that shade? Oh, it just it looks better on my face, and I blah 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 blah. And I would listen to them, and we'd go up, and it'd be like forty bucks, and they would all say, you know, because I only took them one at a time. Daddy, I you know I feel guilty, you know, you're spending all this money and stuff on me, and I'd be like, honey, I am raising you to be. A princess yeah so as I got older um, I would do that stuff and then um, <clears throat> about once every couple months I, I'd pick one of them and be like hey let's go on a daddy daughter date yeah I'd love that and sometimes I would ask them where do you want to go to dinner and they would tell me and then other times, I would say, I'm going to take you to a nice dinner. I'm not telling you where it is, but it's someplace you've never been before, and you're going to love it. And they'd be like, oh, oh, where is it? Where is it? You know, I'm not telling you. You'll find out when we pull up there. And they love that. They're surprised. They're thinking, Dad's taking me out to a nice dinner to some place I've never been. And we're going to spend time together, you know. And so I would do that. So, you know, sometimes, like I said, I'd ask them where they want to go. And then the uh, half the other times I'd be like, I'm picking you up. Be ready. All right. Taking you to a nice place where you've never been before, and you're going to love it. And they were excited. That sets the bar high for the dude that just wants to get laid and take him to McDonald's, okay? They're never going to be satisfied with any of that lower bullshit, okay? Now, I know it's tough to think about that, with about your daughter, but you have to. All right, you have to set that bar high or there's going to be some scumbag that's going to come trolling along and he's going to snag your daughter up. If you if you can't be the man of your house, 
If you cannot be a date for your daughter, somebody else is going to do it, and it won't be you, and you're not going to be happy. I have been blessed so much by God by doing that because all four of my daughters, they've all picked great men. Three out of four of them are married to great men. Uh, the other one is dating a, a great man. She's been dating now for about uh, six and a half years. He's a great guy, you know. And, yeah, so we'd go out to dinner, you know, and I'd be like, order whatever you want. Oh, Dad, you know what? No, no, just look. Don't worry about it. Well, Dad, I don't want to spend your money, but look, this is why I work so hard, all right, so we can have times like this together. Because I love you. And that's, that's why I do this. That, you know, not only to pay the bills, but so we can have this time together. And so they'd be, I'd be like, get whatever, you know, appetizers you want, whatever you want, get whatever meal you want. If it's too much, order anything you want. If it's too much, we can package it up. And if you can't finish it, you can take it home, okay? And, and have it later and think about it. You know, and the time that we spent together. And so many times after those dinners, we'd have a great dinner. And I have all beautiful daughters. They they all look like their mom. <laughs> Thank God they don't look like me. And, and then afterwards, you know, it's like, I know where my daughters like to shop. All right. They'd be like a let, let's just go to this store. I, I, I wouldn't even tell them sometimes. I'd be like driving around and all of a sudden pull into the store and it's like, where are we going, Daddy? Ah, oh, we're going to go into the store and look around. We'd go in there and, well, I don't have any money. Look, don't worry about it. Just let's pick out a couple of things that you like for clothes, all that stuff, man. I'll tell you what, if your daughter feels good about you, and she feels good about herself, she's not going to go for that scumbag, all right, that you're going to want to fucking kill. Trust me on this. I, I guess I learned this because I watched my mom and dad raise my baby sister, who's eight years younger than I am. And my mom always said to my baby sister, hey, we're raising you to be a princess. Now, my daughters, none of them are materialistic. They know what a working man is. They, they, they know that when I took them out to dinner, okay, the bill was 70 or 80 bucks. They knew if I took them shopping, it was 40, 50, 60, 70, $100. They knew that. They, they knew how much I made. They knew the sacrifices that I was doing. So they didn't expect me to take them on a $1,000 shopping spree. Never. Oh, no, never. They knew I worked hard for my money. If you got sons, you'd be a hard-working man. Expect the same from your sons. It's different with sons than with daughters, and I will tell you because I have raised six sons and four daughters. You don't let them sit in there all day and play video games and eat and not work, okay? And pay their cell phone bill, pay their car insurance. You don't do that, okay? And look, you can do whatever you want to do. But if you want to raise a real man, if he wants something, you better teach him to work for it. Right from the time they're about two foot high. All right, you want that new bicycle? Let's work it off. You want this, you want that? You work for it. Traditionally, a man has been the breadwinner 
and the provider and the protector. Bring your boys up that way and be that way as a man yourself. I was fortunate that we had a family business for 22 years. All my sons worked for me and I, I had high expectations from them. I didn't put up with shit, all right? I was very nice to them. They got breakfast and lunch and dinner on me, bottled water, Gatorade, all that stuff. But they, I expected them to work as hard as I did on that job site. And if they didn't, I would say, hey, man, you're slacking off. Come on, we got to hustle up. Or if they wanted to argue and create JAMA I, or didn't want to listen to me, I'd say, you're fired. You're fired. Go in. Look, it's 2 o'clock. I'm stopping your clock now. Go sit in the truck, turn it on, turn the air conditioning on. I was hard that way. When they challenged me, I would not be challenged. And that's the type of father you need to be. You got to set that bar high for them too, so that they can go out and get a good woman. You got to teach them the ways of life, the way a man teaches his son, which is different than the way a man teaches his daughter. I gotta let my cat in. I'll be right back. Next, we're gonna talk about something else. Oh, by the way, every time I fired one of my sons, we'd go home. I'd pay everybody at the kitchen table, and then the one I fired would be tell their mother, he fired me today. And she'd be like, why'd you do that? And I would tell her he was being insubordinate or, you know, whatever. And I was easy. I was hard on them. I had a high bar of expectations, but I was easy on them because I took care of them and I loved them. I gave them hugs all day, kisses on the cheek doing a great job but if they fucked up all right and they fucking stuck that chest out thinking that oh i'm 16 i'm tougher than you i tumbled with more than one of them on the front yard of a job site all right i'm telling you fucking not not fist fighting but tumbling and wrestling look man if, if, uh, yeah i might be a lot older than you but i'm tougher than you are and you ain't fucking gonna get your way, all right? You're fucking fired. And their mother would say, oh, you can't do that. You can't, you you, you just can't fire him. I said, yeah, I, I, I did. He's fired until further notice. Well, you can't do that. Really? Okay. Here's the keys to the truck. That key opens the trailer that holds all of the equipment that does the jobs. Here's the job lists. You go out tomorrow and you do the work. You can rehire them right now. You go do it. Well, I can't do that. I said, no shit. All right. So don't ever question me if I fire one of our boys because I'm a good father. I'm a good man but I ain't going to put up with any bullshit. Insubordination, thinking they can do things their, their own way. Well, you know, the bedroom was a little cold for a couple of weeks after I said stuff like that. But finally, she got the point, and they did too. They were not going to hold me hostage for nothing. And they are all good, strong, hard, working men now, because of it. Do that with your children. I think we're going to have time to go on to the next subject. We'll save that for another night. Well, I'm Paul the Pipe Guy. I hope that you enjoyed hearing what uh, had to talk about during our smoke together. Yeah, God bless y'all.
Tomorrow's December 1st. Happy December 1st. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Paul the Pipe Guy. Live from the outskirts of Rochester, New York, in the United States of America. Yeah. And treat your grandchildren that way, too. Over and out.